Uh, I'm Alex Partridge, I'm in the men's eight, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to competing in the London Olympics. I actually, uh, the first Olympic boat I got in was in the eight in 2002. Uh, so I've been swapping between the eight and the four my whole career. Um, for me, uh, it, it's not really what boat I'm in, it's about crossing the finish line first. And um, I think uh, this year I chose the, the eight because I felt like uh, the whole team is very strong, but I felt like the eight would be the best the best boat for me where I could get the most out of myself and I think that's what I'm most interested in in London you know obviously I want to win I think we all want to win everybody here in in rowing wants to win but um, I think the important thing is when you cross the finish line that you can say you did everything you could and and you gave the best that you could and that way you will be happy with the result because in, inevitably if uh, if someone is faster than you and you have done that you can't change that um, I think to be honest, I think the pressure is on them. You know, I, I've been in the situation when I was in the Coxus Four uh, <coughs> leading up to Beijing. We didn't lose a race for three years, and then we lost the final in 2007. It was something like 39 races undefeated. Um, and when you're in that situation, the pressure does become greater on you because basically the only result you can get is is to win. And as soon as you don't don't win, it's a disaster. I think for us. Uh, yeah, there's pressure because it's a home Olympics, but we put more pressure on ourselves. Like, we really want to win. And, um, okay, it's a new eight this year. It's, it's different than it was last year. We've got, you know, two changes from the, co the guys from the Coxes Four coming into our eight. Um, and we want to learn how to make this eight go fast enough down the track to beat the Germans. But the reality is the Germans probably won't be the only ones there in the final uh, in Beijing and everyone steps up and and you've got to be be able to beat you know all six six boats in, or all five other boats in the final. I mean it's great to have Greg in the boat he's got a lot of experience um, but it's it's really irrelevant I mean it'd be great if Greg Greg won a gold medal as part of the eight but we all want to win the gold medal it's just great that we have such a good athlete on board you know he's He's not as young as he used to be, but he's still a fantastic athlete, and that's more what I'm interested in. The Greg Searle story is, is whatever that will be, but that's not my story, and that's not really going to get me down the track any faster. Um, but it's great to have him in the boat, as well as people like Matt Langridge, Rick Eggington, and all the other guys, you know, Moe Sabihi and James Fode. They're two-time silver medalists in the eight, and um, we've just got to make all those components work to, uh, to cross the finish line first this year. I think um, I was really lucky I, when I was 16 and I just started rowing. I watched uh, the Atlanta Olympics. I was actually in America at the time and I saw Redgrave and Pinson cross the finish line and win the, uh, the only gold medal for Great Britain that year. And, uh, and that kind of ignited in my, in my imagination the dream to be an Olympic athlete. And, and so I kind of devoted my, all my energy and my soul, I guess, to rowing. And by doing that, I've had this... Uh, wonderful life being part of a, a fantastic sport um, but but even better being part of um, I guess the Olympic dream the Olympic m movement and um, and that's something that uh, very few people get to get to be part of and um, and I think it's great for my family around me and, and my you know hopefully friends and everything that it inspires them to to do better things and and, and uh, to kind of want to do more than just the, the normal everyday thing and I, and I feel really privileged and lucky to be a part of that really um, I think well, the thing the big thing about the Olympics is it's, it's only once every four years and you have a world championships every year and I, I'm world champion um, but it's something special about being an Olympic champion well there's something special about being an Olympian because there's a very few uh, a very small percentage of the world that get to do that and there's an even smaller percentage that they become be able to become Olympic medalists and an even smaller percentage that they be, be able to call themselves Olympic champions um, and it just means that you know it shows that all the sacrifice and all the training that you've put into your sport you 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 get the reward and, and it's something that no one can ever take away from you you're being Olympic champion you'll have that forever and it's kind of written in history. I look back at uh, sort of the 1908 Olympics and you can still see who's the Olympic champion. You look at, you know, everyone will remember Steve Redgrave, everyone will remember Tim Foster, um, whatever country it is, you know, everyone remembers Carbonin, everyone uh, remembers Tufta um, in rowing and, and that's kind of what I want to be and, and, and be able to have my own bit of history. Um, well, I've got a, I've, I've just started a, a family, so I've got a little girl. Um, uh, it's we've been really lucky in in the UK that we have uh, good funding from the the national lottery to to be able to be a full-time athlete 
um, and I love what I do. But uh, I'm, I'm finishing off my, uh, my MBA, my master's in business, um, and that's my priority after, after the games. Um, but I think I, I still love the sport, and as long as I'm still getting better, I think I'd quite like to carry on. But um, I think uh, we'll see what happens when I cross the finish line in, in London.